Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for November 6, 2020. It's Friday, which means it's Vault Friday. We are talking about HashiCorp Vault, and I've been going through the Vault certifications. That's been like pretty much every Friday. We're going to take a slight detour this week because I did a lightning talk for HashiCorp at the HashiConf Digital a few weeks ago that was all about running Vault on Azure Container Instances as a way to bring up an, an endpoint that a public endpoint for the Vault service instead of using the dev server locally. And there are definitely some benefits to doing that. So I thought what I would do, because the lightning talks are not posted anywhere, I'm just going to post it here on Vault Friday so you can check it out. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments and ways to improve what I've put together. And uh, I will be back at the end of the presentation for a quick wrap up. Before I show you the presentation, I just want to check in with you and see how you're doing this Friday. It's been a rough and tumble week. I'm impressed that you made it all the way through. I'm impressed that I made it all the way through. But you know what? I'm feeling pretty good today. I got out for a good run. It's a little warmer than usual. I'm actually wearing shorts. So uh, it's just... Strange days. It's November and I'm wearing shorts in Pennsylvania. Something is weird. But anyway, I hope you're doing okay. And here's the presentation of running Vault on Azure Container Instances. So, hello everybody. My name is Ned Bellavance, and uh, I am a HashiCorp ambassador and self-employed at Ned in the Cloud. And I am here to talk today about running Vault on Azure Container Instances the lazy way. So. Why would you even want to run Vault on Azure Container Instances instead of something like a virtual machine? Well, my motivation, the reason that I wanted to do this, was uh, a few different things. One, I really wanted to have a publicly accessible Vault server that I could spin up on demand and then spin down when I'm not using it. You know, to test out new features. I know you can use the dev server for that, but there are times where you want it to be publicly accessible because it has to hook into some other service. So it'd be really nice if you had a public endpoint. And there is a cost factor to running one of those virtual machines on something like the public cloud. So I figured what I really wanted to do was have something with a persistent configuration, but also something I could run at like most minimal cost as possible. And so a virtual machine doesn't necessarily fit that bill. The problem with virtual machines is even when you have them shut down in the cloud, you're usually paying for the storage they're consuming and it's by the disk size. So if you have a 40 gig disk on that thing, well, guess what? You're paying for 40 gig of storage, whether or not you're using it. So I figured, what if I could do that with the container? The other thing is I didn't want to use a dev server instance. I wanted something a little more robust in part because the dev server uses in memory storage, which means every time you kill a dev server, all that stuff that you did is gone. And if I'm trying to build up a, a particular configuration, and I want to step away for a little bit. I just, I wanted that additional persistence to be there. And lastly, I wanted to better understand running vault in the context of a container. I've, I've spun up vault on multiple virtual machines and physical hardware. Uh, and I even successfully deployed a helm chart using vault that that launched vault, but I didn't really understand the minutia of what was going on inside there. So I wanted to just get a better understanding of what was going on there. So that is why I wanted to do this. Now, why pick Azure? Well, if I'm being 100% honest, a portion of that is because I am a Microsoft MVP humble brag. But the more important thing about being a Microsoft MVP is the fact that you get an allowance every month on Azure of free credits, which means I could basically run this for free if I kept my costs within the right boundaries. So that was a pretty decent motivation. Uh, the second thing was that uh, if I'm being completely honest here, I tried to use Fargate for something else. And it didn't go great. It was um, a little too complicated for me. So I figured Rather than stumbling through using Fargate, I'd use something that I was a little more familiar with. And lastly, well, Google Cloud. I, um, yeah, don't know Google Cloud. <laughs> Azure was the thing that I selected. But what I'll show you today is something that you could easily apply to any container service if you wanted to go down a different route. So what does the design of this deployment look like? Let's walk through that very briefly. So. Azure's container instance service basically spins up what you could almost call like pods. 
Uh, it's container groups, they call it, but it's basically one or more containers that form a group, or you could call it a pod in Kubernetes land. And really all I needed to do was spin up one instance of Vault using the official Vault image that HashiCorp publishes. Now, I need somewhere to store my persistent data. Where can I do that? Well, fortunately, I can use an Azure storage account. And one of the new things that's supported by container instances is if you create a file share inside Azure storage, you can mount that file share as a volume on the vault container. So I can generate some certs, I can generate a vault server config, and then for persistent data, I can tell vault to use that share as its data target. Now, how am I going to access that storage account? I'm going to use the primary storage access key associated with that storage account because right now that's the only supported way to do it. Now, since I'm going to be in Azure, I might as well set up auto unseal for my vault. So the way that I'm going to do that is stand up a key vault and create a key inside that key vault. And in this case, I am going to create a user managed identity in Azure AD, give that identity permissions to do all the actions that are required for the vault key and then associate that user identity with that Azure container instance. So each time I spin up a container, this container instance, I add the user identity to it, and now it has access to auto unseal itself. So that is pretty convenient. That's the whole thing. That's the design. I tried to keep it relatively simple. So let's, uh, let's demo this sucker. Let's see how well it works. So I'm going to jump over to Visual Studio Code. There we go. Okay. So these files are available on my GitHub repository. It's Ned1313 on GitHub, uh, and I'll share links at the end of the presentation. So if you do want to do this, it's, it's all available up there. I am going to honestly fly through the Terraform uh, configuration portion of things. And um, before I get to that, you're going to have to log into Azure. I've already done that and select the account that you want to deploy in, then run Terraform in it, and then run Terraform apply with the auto approve, or you can do Terraform plan and apply. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to kick that off now. And then we're going to look at the Terraform configuration while that's running in the background. All right. So what is in this configuration? It's pretty much the design I just talked about with the exception of creating that container, because I actually want to do that separately once I have all the other services and resources created. So if we scroll down, I'm just going to highlight the important parts in here. For locals, I'm going to set up a bunch of local values that I'm going to use for naming things within my resources. So for instance, the vault name is composed of a prefix value, dash vault, dash a random integer that I'm going to generate. And I'm doing that for a bunch of things because in cases like the key vault name or the storage account name, it needs to be globally unique. So I can't just use the same name over and over. All right. So scrolling down, I generate my random ID. And then for the certificate, right now I am creating a self-signed certificate. So I'm creating a private key and then a self-signed cert using that key. Scrolling down a little bit more, I will create that files. I will create files for both the private key and the public key for my certificate. And those are going to be uploaded up into that file share on Azure. Uh, then I have to create a resource group. I create my storage account that I'm using for persistence, the file share on that storage account, and then a directory to hold my certificates on that file share. And then scrolling down a little bit more, we get into the user identity that I have to create to grant access to Key Vault. And then I'm going to create my Key Vault. And under access policy, I'm going to reference that user identity that I just created. And I'm going to give it the key permissions that the vault documentation says is necessary to do the auto unseal. And then I also actually have to give myself access. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to add a key, which is what I do in the next section, which is just add a key to key vault that will be used for the auto unseal. Then we get down to outputs and outputs are where things get a little bit interesting because you may have noticed I didn't create the container anywhere in those resources. And that's because the thing that I want to be able to create and delete on demand is the container. So I have the output of my Terraform script just generate basically a command to run from the command prompt that will generate the container that I want. 
So let's take a look at what's in there. So I'm using the command az container create, referencing the resource group that I just created. Under name, I'm na giving this the name of my vault. And then I'm referencing a specific image, in this case, 1.5.3, but you can bump that to whatever the current version of vault is. And then in the command line, I'm actually running vault server dash config, and then passing it a configuration that's sitting at vault slash vault config. What's in that config? Let's take a look. The important things here to note is we've got a certificate file and a key file that are both being referenced within the configuration. We're telling it for your its storage backend, we want it to use the file type and we're gonna use the path slash vault slash data. So I better have a slash vault attached as a volume to this container. And then lastly, we're setting the seal to Azure Key Vault, but not providing any actual values because those are all gonna be in the environment variables. The next few things are actually mounting up that Azure file share using the proper name and then the path that we want to mount it on. I'm assigning it the identity for Key Vault, and then I'm passing it three environment variables that will be used for that auto unseal, tenant ID, Key Vault name, and Key Vault key. So we've got all that stuff set up and it looks like my configuration completed. So I'm gonna grab this storage account name and just set it as a variable equals boom. Okay. And then we can go back to this deploy script and I am going to upload the configuration and the two certificates that were generated up to my Azure file share. So that's this point, we have everything ready to create our container. So I'll let this finish uploading. Huh? There we go. And then we're going to grab the command that was generated by the output. Where is that? Here we go. Go ahead and grab this whole command here. Make sure I get the whole thing. All right. There we go. And for whatever reason, oh, that's fun. All right. So open up a new shell. We'll go ahead and run this command to create our container, which of course, this is the demo. Ah, there we go. It finally finished the upload of that one file. I don't know why that took so long, but good thing now it's, it's running the spawn of the container on the back end now. So basically it's going to spin up that container. Shouldn't take very long. It's pretty reactive. Once that's set up, the next thing that we'll do is just load the environment variables so that we can talk to it. And that was also in that Terraform output. If we go back to this pane and go up here, I've got two environment variables that are being set. That's the vault address and that we're skipping validation of TLS because, well, it's a self-signed certificate. Validating TLS, that ain't gonna work. All right, so it looks like our launch completed. And if we do vault status, I should get back a return from it saying that, uh, hopefully, I should get a return back saying, there we go, it's not initialized yet, but and it is sealed, but Vault is up and running. So the next thing we need to do from a Vault perspective would be to initialize this. So I'll run the Vault operator initialize command. All right, that is initialized. Let me grab the recovery key, make a note of it, and this token and make a note of that. And now we'll unseal the vault. We only have to do this the first time. And then after this, it will auto unseal itself from here on out. So let's grab this key and paste it down here. Oh, I might have pasted it twice. All right, so our vault is all set up. We can log in and start doing things, but it looks like I only have one minute left. So let me just jump back to the presentation and get to the last slide, which is thank you for coming and attending my lightning talk. That was uh, that was pretty <laughs> quick. Wow, that went by fast. If you want to reach out to me, I'm Ned1313 on Twitter. My website is nedinthecloud.com and you can find these demo files, github.com, Ned1313 Vault on ACI. That's all I have. Thank you so much for attending. All right. 
I only had 15 minutes for that presentation. It went by way too fast. There was way too much information to pack in there. I don't know what I was thinking, but I wanted to make sure I got this presentation up in part because I referenced it in a recent day two cloud podcast. And I said there'd be a link for it. And there isn't a link because HashiCorp isn't posting them. They're just giving us the download links to post them ourselves. So that's what I did here. That's all I have for today and for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please share and subscribe. And until next time, stay healthy and stay safe out there. Bye for now.